today I'm in Weatherby with Adam Norman. Uh, thanks very much, Adam, for agreeing to talk to us today. Uh, so you're a professional punter. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I think it's not a, a term that any of us are particularly happy to, to sort of be labelled with, but I guess um, that's the, the, the top and bottom of it, you know. I mean, if, if people are saying, what do you do? And you say you're a pro, pro punter or pro gambler, it's like, you know, the, the response is, oh, that's interesting. Or, you know, that you get a funny look and people immediately think you're dodgy or flash or, you know, something like that. Um, but yeah, I, you know, the, the, without the punting, I, I wouldn't exist. So uh, the, there are one or two other things that I do, um, but it all stems from the, the work that I put in, you know, for the, for the betting, basically, yeah. Okay, so how do you operate? What's your edge, if you don't mind telling us all? Uh, well, I always enjoyed going racing. I mean, that's the, that, that's basically the back the back story. Um, Dad took me when I was seven to market racing. That was the first ever time I went racing, and just completely got hooked. Um, and uh, I, I guess it all just sort of developed from there. I went racing as much as I could, uh, and I just, I just found that um, uh, punting uh, at the track was easier than punting just watching TV, you know. And um, uh, Dad always, we always arrived about an hour and a half before the first, so so we were always the first in the paddock and, and watching them going around ten times before the before the first race. So uh, I always had a, had a good idea of what I wanted to bet purely through looking at looking at them in, in the paddock. And I don't know how I've got that sort of, I don't know it's ability, but just that sort of feel for, for how they look. And um, just sort of developed from there really. And, and, and uh, yeah, I just, I just, it's not an obsession, but I just always just loved going racing, got the buzz out of going racing. And, and, and I, I always sort of wanted to, um, you know, be in racing and just be around horses and, and, and that sort of thing really. So you, you must be one of the few professional punters, in inverted commas if you like, that still actually ply their trade at the race course. Yeah. Um, now you say you, 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 you take a big um, slice of information out of the paddock. For the layman amongst us, myself included, what is it you're looking for? I think it's, it, it's a very subjective thing. So there's, you, know, you could have there's, there's two or three of you watching the, the paddock and there's you can come out with a, a totally different um, conclusion to the guy next to you. It's a, it's a very subjective thing. Um, I don't just go racing with, with a blank canvas. You know, obviously I do all the study that I, that I can do. Um, I always say that, that, that the paddock is the final piece of the jigsaw. And, um, but I, I, you're just looking for, you're looking for well-being, confirmation, um, just general health, skin, how they look in the skin, uh, whether they're carrying condition, um, just just general well-being, um, and you just bake it into the pie of, of of everything else that you've that you've studied on the race. Um, yeah, I think uh, I, I I don't really get an edge on the flat. I just do I just do the jumps. I've never been really into the flat that much for some reason. Um, I don't really find an edge on the flat. That all shapes and sizes seem to perform, you know, to, to whatever they're capable of. Whereas the the jumps, I can just I can just see something that's going to evolve into something better, um, and uh, and it's it's just nice to be to be a professional that that, that I can get to, get to the races often enough. I can see a horse develop over six or seven runs in a season. And I can see that development from October or November time to right through to the spring. And, and you can just see a, that a horse is ready to, 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 to produce a personal best just through its either growth or its strengthening or just its condition or lack of condition. Obviously, they can go the other way. So um, I think that that's what I enjoy most, seeing a horse progress, you know, from, from a young age to... To old age, basically. So, and, is it all in your head? Did you take photographs, make notes? No, I don't take photographs. I try and rely on it on, on my, my brain. Um, but I, but yeah, you know, I have a hard copy that I write down notes every every race. Um, and then when I get back, um, I will transfer that to 
uh, racing post notes uh, and and I'll, I'll put it all in the in the blog Norm's notebook which is as unpopular as it always was <laughs> uh, um, but it's you know I put it out there and um, I don't I, I I don't really refer to the blog at all, really. Uh, it's all in, in my sort of my hard notes and then the notes I write. Um, but sometimes I do go back. I have to go back to the, the blog and see what I write because because the blog is, it's it's very instant and it's it's kind of quite raw. I will literally come back out of the car straight up there and just write bash it all out while it's still fresh in my mind, you know. Um, so do you ever go to the races with a bet in mind, and then maybe even end up laying the horse because where it looks. Do you get involved with laying? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, instinctively, I'm a, I'm a punter. Um, it all started through punting. Um, Betfair came along and sort of changed everything. But prior to that, I was always, um, I, I used the spreads a lot. And um, actually just looking through my old uh, my old bets from, from years ago that I've still got copies of. Did a lot of laying and sort of selling on the on the spreads, um, uh, all sorts of things. I mean, racing post favourites, jockeys indexes, distances, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, it was a real, you know, the spreads were were a real sort of uh, eye opener in the sort of late nineties. Um, and um, I I don't really do so much of that now. I don't really know why. I just I just find that that, that betting finding winners is is, is more appealing. Um, but uh, do I go? Do I go with with a an idea of who who to bet? It depends on the season, the the, the time of the, the the time of the season. It, it sort of ebbs and flows. Um, I, I think fifty percent of it is reconnaissance, really, for for future reference. Um, certainly in the in the first part of the season, I've got to keep an open mind on whether something's going to be fit or not. Um, so I don't. Something might be. Something might be twelve to one in the morning that looks ma- a massive price, but if I get to the track and it's it's seven to one and it's and it's not fit, or if it's fit, then then I've got a whole new thing to, to sort of build into the into the into the into the race. So uh, it, yeah. I don't do much betting in the morning, or certainly not the night before. I think that's crazy. I don't want to, you know, I'm not. I don't want to mark the cards of, of of firms, you know, just who just let me have fives and tenors. I think that's that's sort of crazy, really. So, um, getting on isn't a massive issue because I, I, I most of my punting, eighty percent, I'd say, it happens on the show. So um, I try and go generally with a blank a blank canvas. I've done all the research as much as I can. Um, the decisions will be made in the last sort of three or four minutes once I've seen the paddock, watched them go down, and I've got all the all, all the pieces in, of the jigsaw together, you know. So what, how important is a price to them? If you, you see a horse that looks extremely fit and you've worked out that it's um, got an excellent chance in the conditions today, is there a point where you will not back it because it's too short? Yeah, definitely. I think, I think you know, value is... is is important but it's it, price isn't everything i don't think and it's not it's certainly not for me because because i rely so much on on the paddock that um as i say and i've written a blog about it that uh something something could be seven or eight to one in the morning it's backed into sort of fives nine to two or whatever that that not I, i'm not going to not back back it at night just because it was eight to one you know I want to back it. It's interesting to me. Is it? Does it stand out in the paddock? Or am I happy with its with its condition? Yes. Um, am I happy to back it at? There's obviously a, a point where I'm not gonna. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that's too short. Obviously, you know. But um, you've got to you've got to take what's presented to you. You know, and and I. I'd rather back a nine to two winner than a than a horse that than, than backing his eight to one in the morning, getting to the track, and it's not. Doesn't look how I want it to look, or, to, or something else in the race has opened my eyes to, to, and changed my my view on the race. Um, so I've got to be open minded to, towards that, you know. So do you bet with the racehorse bookies? I want to and ought to a lot more. Um, the ring obviously isn't what it used to be, and it used to be. I, I think that was one of the sort of intoxicating p- parts of, of of 
learning to love the love the game is that you you, you went from the paddock to the betting ring and it was a jungle you know um, and you could almost sense um, the, the, not intuition, but you can almost sense there was a the, 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 a market move was coming, and and, and getting the price was p almost part of the fun, really. Um, but I'm so sort of busy with the paddock and the sort of business that I do prior to the race um, that it's easier to just to just click the buttons on the on, on the phone, you know. Um, but I sort of want to get away from that and get to, get back to 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 betting with with bookmakers you know because they will take they will pretty much take anything you know uh, i think i think liquidity is important to them you know and um and i do enjoy betting with the punt with, with the with the bookers but um it's just ease really that it's so easy to just press those buttons on betfair you know that um i tend to do that more but i, I do still take a you know take a load a bundle of cash and and, and use it if needed you know so there is, there is, sorry, but there is, there is value. I mean, there could be something at four point two on the machine, and it's ten to three or three to one. You know, which is, you know, you know, there, there, there's plenty of value on the track, regardless of what people think. Do you ever go racing and not bet? Not, not too, not too often. <laughs> Again, it depends on the on on the season. It, you know, October, November, I, I, I tend to sort of tiptoe through, and there are days when I just when it just looks horrendous and i'm just going to 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 take notes um but i you know i do get dragged into into bets and it's funny you know you drive to carlisle and back in a day and ultimately is it is a day at the races and um the the natural instinct is to have a bet you know you're there to you're 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 calling yourself a professional gambler you're sort of there you're looking you're always looking for a bet you're always looking for a bet um and uh, but sometimes they just don't present themselves, and sometimes you're just not up for it, or you just, you just the mood's not right, the racing's not right, the weather's not right, whatever. And um, and it's 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 far better just to take notes, and you know you just don't you don't know what you're going to see. Sometimes I look at a card and think, I'm just, what am I doing here? And then you know nine months later, you'll look at a note from that meeting, and you'll realise that it was it was worthwhile going. You know. So well, how are the exes going racing? Um, I don't, I don't really, I don't really think about it too much. Um, the, I mean, what, what I, what I do is from, so from the, from, from the blog, uh, I, um, I sort of started a business from people that were interested in that. Um, I, I wanted to sort of, I wanted to sort of get out there the, uh, that the, there is an edge, an edge at the paddock and, uh, it can be part used use as part of your sort of punting strategy, and um, and so I just sort of I've got a few clients that I I send text messages to, um, just prior to the off, uh, and um, and that sort of covers that sort of covers all the X's and a bit more really, you know. Um, so I don't I, I don't really worry about it too much. I mean, go racing in York, you do a badge where. Um, uh, you know, you can get into every track. For, it's like it's it's brilliant value. Get into every track for for a year, and um, and it's great value. So I, don't, I tend not to worry too much about that sort of thing.